On the retro show today. Sorry, I'm having a blonde moment. <laughs> anyway, we digress. <laughs> Stay forever! <laughs> no, we're not live, but it is episode five. Oh, hi, Chip Dippers. Oh, hello, Chip Dippers. Welcome to another episode of The, the Retro, Retro Show. Show. And it is indeed episode five, recipe five. Uh, it is nice to see you here again. Thanks for joining us. And uh, we can actually see you, by the way. You might want to put some underwear on or something. Um, you got your underwear on? No, just your collar. She's all naked. Well, uh, puppy character coming. She's embarrassed. Anyway, we'll crack right on. Not cr- that kind of crack. Uh, with, what is it next? Old news? Old news. Oh, that's old news. And of course, we're just looking back in history. This month in 1986, it was Madonna, of course, who had a number one in the UK singles chart with her second number one single, Papa Don't Preach. She looks quite good now, nowadays. Uh, yeah, I think she's had some work done since this photo was taken. Yeah, she's doing great though. And another look back in history this month in 1989, of course, Lethal Weapon 2 was released. It was a good movie, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, Mel Gibson there. And uh, what's his name? What's his name? Trevor McDonald. <laughs> yeah. Lady Francis has got the giggles for some reason. Uh, Le- Lethal Weapon 2 there, of course, with yeah. Danny Glover. Yeah. Uh, and another quick look oh back. Oh, my God. That this, was, I was this day <laughs> in 1961, Diana, of course, Princess of Wales, was born. Um, it would have been her birthday in, in July, of course, a very happy birthday to Lady... to George Michael. Lady George Michael. <laughs> To Lady George. And a final look back in history this month. In 1979, the B-52s made their UK live debut with the famous song, Ant on My Elbow. Is that Ant-Man? <laughs> what have I got an ant on my elbow? We have actually got ants in the kitchen right now. So he's come along for the ride. What? You know about that. You put the ant trap down. Sorry, I'm having a blonde moment. <laughs> Anyway, that was a quick look back in history, but now, a look inside. Welcome to Hashi. <laughs> this is the secret Nintendo cafe in Tokyo. Uh, so this guy's been running this cafe for many years, but to find it was almost like a game in itself. Uh, it isn't advertised, the location. So if you could find it, you could go there. It's in a 500 year old um, building somewhere in Tokyo. And I think now he's opened it so you can make reservations uh, and actually go visit. Yeah, he's talking about, (laughs) that's part of the game, finding the cafe. And it's got all this, yeah, Nintendo, similar to the Game & Watch, but all this memorabilia from some of the original artists and designers. This, he was offered $100,000 for this original drawing. I think it was that one. But he said it, it's for the people, so he's keeping it there. Oh, this one was 100,000. Wow. That's by the original, one of the original artists on Super Mario. Very cool. Now, we've been planning, thinking about going to Tokyo. We were going to go last year for a special retro recipe road trip in Tokyo, but uh, a certain global pandemic had other ideas. Yep. <laughs> so we're still planning that, um, and I think this should definitely be on the list. Oh, absolutely. I can't wait. You're excited, I can tell. So that is that. And then, speaking of Mario, can you tell what's going on here? What's different? It's almost a trick question. It is in widescreen. So uh, using the original ROM, which you have to own, of course, legally, you can download a hack for it. Um, Please don't uh, (laughs) block this video, Nintendo. I didn't create the hack. But it just enables you, it labels you, it labels you in widescreen mode and allows you to play the original game on the original SNES uh, in widescreen on your new TV. 
That's, because they are widescreen. As demonstrated on our widescreen Commodore 1084 behind us. Um, it's amazing what you can do these days. You know, that looks so good on a big screen. I Doesn't it? it? Yeah. And it's not changing the game at all. It's simply exposing more of the code on either edge um, to the scrolling routines. Love it. By the way, this is by Vito Vilela. 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 Yes. We won't veto going there. Uh, and from that terrible joke to more terrible jokes in I see what you meme. I see what you meme. And first up, more Mario with realistic Mario again. Be okay. Mario, what happened? Luigi, I, I hit the block. I hit it with my head. Why did you hit the block? <laughs> I thought that there'd be a single gold coin. Some of them have coins. Ah, really? No! <laughs> Luigi, no! <laughs> Thank you, Pete Holmes. Realistic Mario there. Next up... And have you been passing your and normally having a wee? Uh, an Xbox. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> have you been going to the toilet normally? <laughs> you understand? Yes, that was painful. Oh, my God. What do you... Do you say having a wee in America? No. We don't have a wee. We go pee. Go pee. That could be a whole different console. <laughs> Poor guy. Uh, and then Timothy Richard says, am I the only one who noticed something familiar about the latest Sherwin-Williams commercial? Interesting. It's, I mean, there's obviously a Commodore fan at Sherwin-Williams, so kudos to you. <laughs> I would always, like, if, now, in the nerd community, there's always something about calling out a nerd when you are a nerd, so I would see that and go, nerd, um, while still loving and respecting it. He's a nerd. Timothy. The front, the back, mm -hmm. and uh, cleverly concealed here behind the couch and um, some white pieces of card, <laughs> a similar story. Yeah. Next up. Oh, I see. What did you see? I see how the trick is done. How? That's real. Someone, so the dog's wearing a shirt for a reason? Yes. Because someone has his hands by his shoulders? No. Sorry, you're wrong. Next up, the best way to upgrade your game stream room. I thought it said steam room. Ooh. Light switches. Notice the lights didn't turn on or off. I no, hope, they did hope not. you got it working. But I think that'd be good for over there. Can I tell you the problem with this? There is a legitimate problem. It, no one walks up to like like a Pac-Man or a Street Fighter and go, goes boop. You walk by and you go like this. And then nah, 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 nah. you, you just make a strobe. Like I, I maybe would. he he already fused the lights by the look of it. They're playing too much on it. And a final one, if just for a change, some Mario. Hey, it's uh, the Mario Bros. Mama, why you uh, never remember my name? I'm a sorry, Green Mario. <laughs> That's a good one. Luigi's last name is Mario. Yeah, Mario Mario. And, and Luigi, Luigi Mario. Mario. But yes, Green Mario. I and, know. And Puppy Fractic says, I want to marry you. Oh, thank so you're giving you the correct hand and everything. But on a dog, which finger is the ring finger? The tail. <laughs> it's a good finger. Oh, sorry, I'm having a blonde moment again. Anyway. Uh, 
And indeed, it is time for another fun boxing, a mini one in this uh, recipe of the retro shows. <laughs> so many special words to remember. Uh, so we should probably just get rid of the 1084S and uh, replace it with some boxes. Ready? And first up, would you like to pass? Bananas! Pass the bananas. Your where's bananas. My, where's my cutie It was thing? right there. I, I unboxed my watch strap. Can you smell that smell good? Oops. So this is, as you can see, a dream Commodore 64 from Gaston Martin Ferreros. <laughs> Hope we got that name right. Uh, let's have a look. Help me. That Commodore 64 will be faulty again now. From static. Aha! Oh. A letter. He says that in an old video, I said the Commodore 64 never had clones. Well, this is not a clone, but a licensed built C64C produced by Dream. I thought it was a Dream with an N. A kitchen appliance factory that still exists. Their dishwasher is made by Dream. Very cool. They also made C16s and other things. And he says he made the package as small as he could because his sister brought it to the USA in his luggage. Uh, thank you very much. That is amazing. But let's let's look at it because I want to see the logo. Ah, the dream. Now I do dream about Commodore 64. Dream Commodore 64. See, that's incredible. Everything else is identical. Computado fabricado por. Dream, San Luis, SA. I will treasure that. Thank you so much, That's Gaston. Special. Very special. Very nice. Okay, pass the middle one. There's two. Which one's the middle? <laughs> <laughs> Why do I say middle? I meant middle in the segment. It's gonna, there's, there's three. <laughs> We're now in the middle. We're going to go over shapes and numbers after this. Don't worry. It's the round one in the middle. Oh. Okay. Oh, this is from Manscaped, uh, who have very kindly sponsored this video. First up in here, this is the... That's the Lawnmower 4.0. It is indeed. Uh, now this has been specially designed so it is waterproof. You can take it in the shower and it features skin safe technology uh, to help you avoid nicks and cuts in sensitive areas. And I think they do mean sideburns. And also in here, two products I didn't even know I needed. This is the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, which I assume is for puppy fractic balls, which is why they've sent us to send this. Send for us. tennis balls. That's what, I, what else would I mean? And some boxer briefs for Lady Fractic. Oh. Seems to be a normal newspaper. Oh. If you check out manscaped.com and enter the special code retro recipes, you get 20% off, you'll get free shipping, and you'll get two free gifts. And really good lawn care. For your tennis balls. Where did, where did my balls go? Anyway, um, onwards <laughs> real quick with a car. Very lady and puppy. Puppies. He smiles. He likes being an only child up here. Uh, this is from Scott W. Bolliard. And he's from Holy Toledo, Ohio. Is it? Is it holy? No, but people say Holy Toledo. Oh, okay. Instead of using profanity or the Lord's name in vain. Excellent. Uh, he says, thank you for your, all your hard work and keeping us entertained. Your videos are wonderful and we simply love you guys. We especially love seeing our two-year-old daughter, Harley, shout. Puppy Fractic is so cute. No. <laughs> Puppy friend. Puppy Frantic is so cute. Oh, that's so cute. And she'll go into her rendition of PCB Way with arms flailing about. PCB Way. <laughs> Say oh. it. PCB Way. Uh, who are absolutely terrible at flailing about. In fact, they are very organized. You flailing? <laughs> She's doing her arms as well. They're very organized when they uh, design and create. They don't design your PCBs, but they create them for you. Great quality ones at that for just five bucks. 
Because as we all know, PCB stands for Puppy Fractic Claps Boards. Table is made of boards. I'll give myself that. Anyway, we digress. <laughs> And Scott says Enclosed for Us is a game that he's owned since he was a kid. Very well wrapped. The last V8 and War Games. I've got seconds to get the heck out of here. Thank you so much, Scott, for your kind donation and all the donations this episode of The Retro Show. Now it's time for some home brews. Home brews. Old news. Uh, and first up, we have look at these. So this is by Pixel Pody and Sean Huckster, and they are three D printed figures from Impossible Mission. They sure are. Now you played a live stream of that in uh, Lady Fractic Plays, otherwise known as Lady Play. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and you enjoyed that. You played that on the Switch. I did. It was very difficult. Yeah, it's it's a, one of my favorite games, but the Switch version, they replaced the speech for some reason, probably due to copyright, copyright or yeah. permissions or something. Another visitor! Stay alive! Stay forever! <laughs> but you could toggle on the Switch version between 8-bit graphics and uh, the modern graphics, which was cool. But these are great. So for any of you fans, check out Pixel Pody on thingiverse.com and you can print these just like Sean did. Next up, you have a certain song you love, right? Oh, I think I'll leave that there, Raymond. Uh, that was from Raymond <laughs> Doches, uh, who sent in a few things to the channel. Thank you so much, Raymond. Um, and I'll be showing more of your stuff in future recipes. Um, I didn't realize it had an expletive, hence <laughs> the quick. I thought he was saying it's a rocking ship. <laughs> it but clearly I had a word on the screen. I think anyway. it was my spot. This, however, is from uh, Aaron Clark. Hey, Aaron. Um, and he's using a SIO to PC connection and Atari link on his Atari 800XL and connecting to a Thunderbolt BBS run by a friend of his. Did you ever have BBSs, bulletin boards, in, while you were growing up? Maybe on the Apple II at school or... I have no memory of that. You dial in and you get this menu of... Oh, no. So that was really the precursor to the, the interwebs. But what I love is that BBSs are still around and, and a lot of the old BBSs have been rekindled by their um, sysops, system operators. Uh, so you can still dial into them, maybe not through the phone, but through an IP address or such like. Mm. So there's Aaron doing just that. And this is Random Mesa, coming soon to your Atari STE. E stands for enhanced. Ah. Enhance. This is a free massive action puzzler with a Lemmings vibe by Thomas Ilg. Ex Falcon. Yeah. Enjoying the music. And that is Randomizer. Looks like a really fun game. Unless you're an Amiga. See the small print. Sorry, Amiga. Sorry, girlfriend. Ah, and it is time for another delicious bowl of nostalgia flakes. And first up, we have Matthew and Donna Lee, brother and sister. And Matthew is on the right with his PC-20, his Commodore PC-20, playing battle chess connected via serial cable to Donna's Amiga 500 on the left. I don't know if she owned it or not. 
also playing battle chess. So they're playing a, a networked game, um, which was, of course, a feature of battle chess. You could also play against the Atari ST, and uh, you look like you're modeling. No, I've got battle some, chess modeling. There's some dog hair just gracing my neck. Gracing or grazing? It's gracing me with its presence. And he's he's offended and has left. This is your hair. And you know who else has hair? Matthew and Donna Lee playing battle chess there. How about that for a good <laughs> a good connection? You know who else is human? Love it. Uh, and of course, we did a lot of um, two or three videos about battle chess. Um, yes, we had a whole season, I feel. Yeah. Now, I've been planning uh, an episode where we do finally solve the riddle of Amiga versus Atari ST using chess by playing those two together. So look forward to that when I can finally get two working machines figured out. Uh, next up, this is Tom Schulter, January 1st, 1986. He just turned 14 and everything just got faster. Do you know why? Why? Because he's holding an Epix fast load cartridge. Wow. This is for, probably for the Commodore 64. Uh, you certainly could get it for that. And that's the Commodore 64 <laughs> pointing there. I can see it. I'm just turned all the way around. It's definitely the, the wrong. Oh, let me look at the Apple IIe. Just over here. <laughs> I probably cracked my back in a re really satisfying way, though. Um, this would let you load games faster. Oh, yeah. And you could push the button to save your game because a lot of them didn't have a save game option. Mm. And <laughs> she's really offended. Them. No, it reminds me of the meme we saw last week that said, I have no memory. Yes. Huh? Epic's fast load there, and I love seeing these little moments in history. Uh, as you know, I have none. I have no photos of my old computers. You probably have more than me, actually. Mm, maybe. I'll take a look one day. <laughs> no, I will. And next up is MG Knight doing some VIC-20 retro coding with his son. This is part one of what I hope is going to be a series of videos where I get to teach you some coding. But we're not going to use anything modern. We're going to use what we can see on the screen here, which is the first computer I ever owned. This is a Commodore VIC-20. You usually start with line 10. No, 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 that's not what I mean. You don't need to do that. You just type the line. He's pressing enter 10 times. Keyboard's different. <laughs> uh oh, uh oh. Hey, congratulations, you've just written your first retro code. Hey, that's quite Look at his nice. face, he's so Brilliant. happy. How did you enjoy your first that was very foggy. lesson in Commodore 1983 Vic20 Basic? That was very foggy. I remember like a B guy. Excellent. Good job, Will and MG Knight, that is very sweet. And finally, uh, an equally sweet video. This is Friend of the Channel. Carl Potregi's daughter, Adriana, Adifractic. She's playing Bear Bother. <laughs> I'm getting very bothered by it. I mean, can we all relate? I've ne I never played Bear Bother. No, but you've definitely shouted at a game. Yeah, more, more times than I can remember. In fact, I'm playing more games now, um, doing reviews for Zap64. Uh, and Lady Fractic helped out with Don't Break the Break the balls. What is with this episode? It's a running theme today. It's a game called Don't Break the Balls. We have to keep little bubbles in the air using fans on the Commodore 64. And it has two different two-player modes. Do you need a fan? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I knew I wasn't uh, imagining things earlier. Who's that girl? What girl? Oh, I'm in a bear bother. Well, on that blonde bombshell, it's time to say that that is all we've got time for. Thank you so much for watching. You'll explain what's going on later, right? Okay. <laughs> Just doing it again. We'll see you next time. If you enjoy the retro, the retro show. The retro show. Please share this video on your favorite social media network. Uh, we'd love to get some more viewers for the format. We know you guys love it. Uh, and it's always good to spread the word. And if you haven't, make sure you subscribe and support below and... Cheerio! Cheerio! <laughs>
Maybe hit my face. Nearly. Not close enough. I'm a star. Oh, sorry, I was just having a blunt moment. <laughs> <laughs>